hat or your wig. You just have to take your face mask off. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> Can you hear me? You had to put all the roaches back in the jar. You <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> You are here with me. I appreciate you for coming on with me. Oh, you're welcome anytime. Um That's so about the about the fly. So yes, there's What's about the flies. Yes, there's like um there's thousands of different types of flies. Uh, when I was saying like, you know, some of them are predators, there's certain ones like uh they're called um robber flies. They're actually predators and they actually hunt other insects as well as other flies and things like that. Then there's, you know, there's like tsetse flies, the ones that transmit uh, trypanosomes over in Africa. There's mosquitoes. They fall in under that same family. The family is, the order is called diptera. So the, the, the diptera are the true flies. So that, that includes mosquitoes. That includes flies, midges, crane flies. All of those fall under that, that order of diptera. So when you say a fly... I have to ask, like, well, what are you, what are you referring to? Because there's so many different so types. You of know, <laughs> fly. When I say fly, I'm like, no, why? The fly. Yeah. So. Because I have to bring it back to mind that you know, there's always a, a a different species of anything, right? Right. Right. So it's just like the plants. Like you, you have a rose, but then you have like hundreds of different types of roses. So. Mm -hmm. Flies are no different. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so about food, though, like, <laughs> so what do you tell us about what to do when a fly land on the food? That depends on what type of fly. So, like, if it's a house fly or what they call the um the the bottle flies, or they also call them um what is the other name for them? I'm trying to remember common names because I'm used to saying all the scientific names. Um. I know you is. I know it. <laughs> the field flies. So those are the ones that you usually find like on garbage and you find them like when something dies. Those are the ones that help break that stuff down. Now if they Yes. So if they I'm learning <laughs> So what happens is they'll they'll lay their eggs on, you know, anything that's rotting or dying or, you know, if it's animal waste, they'll lay their eggs on there. So they're crawling around on that stuff and then if they come and land on your food you have the possibility of getting your food contaminated with whatever's on their feet. So there's been instances of where flies have transmitted things like dysentery, diphtheria, salmonella, E. coli, because they're crawling around on things that have those bacteria on it. Um, there's also a fly that I believe is, is it the house fly or there's a fly that, that can actually lay a live a live larva on your food. So if it lands in there, it can lay alive. Yeah. So it can't, there are some that does that. So that's why I say what, it matters what fly lands on there depends on what you're going to be encountering. Now, say if it's a, like a, um, a fruit fly or a gnat, you may be all right. Because usually fruit flies, they're only going to be flying around fruit that's actually breaking down. And it, no, no, they can smell the vinegar that's developing. That's why they are attracted to that. Yes. yes, we yes. in the vinegar jar. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, you probably be all right if they landed on there, but if you have, like, one of those field flies land on there, you might you might want to either section out that whole area <laughs> where it was crawling. Well, because That was the advice. Yes. Uh, yes, just break that piece off. Yeah, because if they, if they have some type of bacteria on their feet and they, they walked on there, and flies do re, re, uh, regurgitate, when they feed. So they'll suck up food and then they'll spit it back out. Um, so if they were on something nasty and then they come on your food, just know they may be doing that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> that, that was what I was specifically wanting to address. That is what I thought was a myth, but you have not debunked the myth. No, it's What's not a the, myth. What, well, you don't debunk the myth. That's like confirming that it's not a myth, right? Right. And so it's true. <laughs> right. Okay. No miss. Um, so, yeah. yeah, it depends on what fly. Um, but like I say, there's different types of flies. Like like I say, mosquitoes even fall underneath that whole, that whole order. So mosquitoes are considered flies. They're just flies that feed. The females feed on blood. The males don't feed on blood. They actually feed on nectar. Um, 
the females will feed what? on nectar until it comes until it becomes time for them to lay eggs. And when they mate, and when they when they're ready to lay eggs, they have to get a blood meal because um, the blood be, contains proteins that will help them develop those eggs. So that's why they go and feed on mostly mammals. I mean, but mosquitoes have been known to feed on reptiles and things like that. That's how diseases are transmitted between animals and you know humans. Um, mosquitoes may feed on you know something that was infected with whatever they may have. If it's like it's Easter equine encephalitis or something, they get that from horses. That can actually infect humans as well. So, yeah, <laughs> that's when I, say, when I say you have to tell me what fly. I you have to explain what fly. Um, start talking like that. It just sounds like you need to be on CNN every summer when they start talking about Zika. Like you just need to get on there. <laughs> you know, but she's coming on the podcast. Y'all. She just didn't have her email situated because I had. Th- and because when you say she needs to be on a podcast, I take it personally a little bit. Like, I already had asked her, though, like a month ago, because, like, as soon as I found a black entomologist, I was like, um, yes, I need black entomologist because yeah. in the gardening game, like, but you know how it goes. You follow a lot of black gardeners, yeah. house planting and stuff and we always cry about bugs, like oh, yeah. spider when, when it starts getting warm again, I'm going to get inundated with uh, pictures. I get pictures and, and questions all day long. What is this? I don't. What is this? Is it good or bad? You know, I've I've saved a lot of ladybug larvae because people were thinking that they were like, um, I don't know what they thought, but they would kill them. And so I had to do multiple posts to explain like, yes, those are ladybug larvae. The ladybug larvae do not look like the adults, and okay. this is this is what they look like. Uh, so okay. you're not killing them. Um, they kind of look like little, I guess like people call them like little, I don't know. They kind of, I can't describe them. You just have to see a picture of them. If you've never seen one, uh, a lot of times people have been killing them thinking they were feeding on their plant and they were actually feeding on the aphids that were on the plant. So That's um. what they do. That's what we love. <laughs> like we love ladybugs like this. Um, yeah, okay. So when you see what occurs to me is you you could be of great help. I'm thinking because I'm getting into the mindset of reformatting the podcast. So mm-hmm. um, we could talk more about this, you know, in the email discussion or whatever, but a segment of some sort. Okay. Uh, okay. Just one episode ain't really going to be enough. So, you know, this is like a real special exclusive kind of situation. <laughs> you know, our witnessing history of Black in the Garden right now. We gonna get make sure y'all when it gets warm, y'all not gonna have to be worried about all the. So, right. That sounds like something they could do. Figure out how that would work, and I won't take up too much of your time because I know you got all the bugs to be trying to study. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Them. I want to ask you more questions. That I really do want to. I have some very specific ones that I was looking forward to asking you on the show. But okay. Fuck it. I'm, ask you so when did you first get into bugs like when you oh. first saw a bug what's your first bug when i was a little child four three four years old when i go outside <laughs> like did you like did you always like bugs or like yeah i've always liked them i i've always collected like, them i studied them um i would do surgery on them i would bring them back to life um <laughs> Um, yeah, I I just always been interested in also that's yeah, since I was a little child. (laughs) I I love everything that you just said because I just I've always been blurdy is the word, you know, black nerd. And so for you to be into bugs, that is kind of like one of the heights of of blurred, you know what I'm saying? Because it's one of those (laughs) things that is like not typically associated with things that black people fool with. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, right. Oh yeah, that, I was I, I was all animals, but I just I always had a place in my heart for the insects, but I love all animals. Um but just insects they just interest me because they're so different. Um, you know, like I mean, it's not like a dog or a cat and there's my dog trying to get on the camera, but um <laughs> They're not like, 
their life their life is like a mystery and like to just study them like watching ants or you know even watching things that are not insects like spiders and stuff um you find out so much about them just by looking at them and studying them and um and you know when i when i finally went to went to college and stuff and i was able to you know take classes and stuff it just it really just opened up a whole nother world Um, where did you go i went to ohio state and then i have a master's from um um University of Nebraska. <laughs> University of Nebraska in entomology? Yes. I have a master's in entomology. Yes. <laughs> wow. I, I, that's so impressive to me. Like, I'm super duper impressed. Someone asked if you could do a quick intro. Can you do that? Oh, uh, sure. I feel like we get it, but if you could do an intro. Okay. Um, My name's Nadia. <laughs> I'm known as Urban Farm <laughs> Sister on the internet. Um. I like I said I've always had an interest in insects and animals and you know science stuff ever since I was really really young. Um, mm. You know when most kids were running away from insects or you know mostly girls I was running to them and I was like picking them up and I would take them to like class and and teach about them and you know people got tired of hearing about. Because <laughs> oh, I can't really imagine. Be- I don't. What'd you say? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Trying to determine, because you know how it is. You know how you knew how you were when you was a child. So in my mind, I'm like, I wonder if I would have wanted to be your friend and you playing with bugs. And... <laughs> probably I not. Feel like I, I feel like I probably would have. I'm not really sure. But I'm like now, it's interesting to go and being able to appreciate like oh, that's like some real high-level kind of genius type of stuff to really be up on it like that. So right, it's respect. right. So now right. I'm like, now, okay, this is a question I had. So as the girl who runs towards bugs, now the woman who loves bugs, understands bugs, I'm sure when you see a bug, you most likely can identify it. So in a relationship, I ain't trying to get in your business, but in relationships like, if a bug came out, like a nigga was running or whatever, like, how did you receive that? Like, were you like, you a punk, man? I know what that is. That's like a arachnid type two or whatever. Like, how did that go? Um, so I, it goes either way. Shit. Like, because it's, it's sometimes like men be like, you shouldn't be playing with those. That's nasty. That's not ladylike. And then others, others are really intrigued. Like, wow. Like, I would never have thought, you know, you've been interested. But, you know, I've mm-hmm. I've had to save guys from spiders. And <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to know. That's exactly, that's what I was getting at. It's like, they over there, like, bitching out. It's just like, bro, it's just like a regular spider. It's good. You're good. Don't worry about it. Right. Wow. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and I, then, I, you know, I. I had to educate them too about it too. Like this is not gonna do anything to you. It's 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 not a black widow and it's not a black recluse. And even if it was, like you had to do a lot of provoking before they actually would bite you. Um, but mm. yeah, you know, I don't know. So, do. saying in general, now we can come back to the general public. Mm-hmm. We see spiders. That's not something that we gotta run from. Because I'm trying to get everybody questions answered tonight. So when they see a spider again. <laughs> react no you shouldn't you shouldn't have to you shouldn't really run from any of them um now just knowing in the united states that brown recluse and the uh, <laughs> black widow are here in certain areas they're not everywhere um and that like i say it takes a lot for them to actually want to bite you anyway because okay. when they're biting you they're using a the venom that they actually use to capture prey and it takes them about three days to regenerate that venom. So they're not really wanting to waste that on, you know, a defensive attack. Um, they'd rather use that so they can actually get food. Um, now, with brown, Ray, with brown recluse, though, the issue is is that they are what are called hunting spiders, which means they crawl around. They're not like the, the, the uh, black widows where they stay in a web. So... The brown recluse, they they encounter humans a lot more than the black black widows because they're actually crawling around trying to find, you know, either mates or they're trying to find prey. And a lot of times they'll make their ways into people's homes 
and they'll, you know, get in people's beds or they'll get in their cabinets and things like that. And then that's how people encounter them. And that's how they end up getting bit by them. Um, so just so just know, like, they are there. Um, I know up here in Ohio, every now and then we will get some pockets of them in certain areas. But I know they are in Indiana, and they're in, a lot in the, you know, the, the southwestern area and things like that. Um, just I mean, know that they're there. <laughs> oh, now, so I'm just the fear mongering of it all. Like you, you know, we probably half of us in the bed. You talking about the brown recluse getting the bed, and I'm just like, this, <laughs> this <is> so <laughs> like, what are we doing? It's yeah. too late, though. It's too late. We're already <laughs> fearful. Oh, um, so <laughs> and I know it's a, it's a lot of times there's there's spiders that look like the brown recluse that are mistaken as the brown recluse. Like there's wolf spiders. Um, there's they what are called um. Fishing spiders, they actually, these spiders will actually make webs by water and they'll fish for little tiny fish and things. Um, but oh, they, they, they look, <laughs> yeah, they, but they look very similar, but they're not the same thing. Now note that all spiders have venom. So all spiders have the potential to bite you um, if they're feeling threatened. It's just that certain okay. ones, their venom, like with the brown recluse, <laughs> it's, a ne it's a necrotoxin. And the uh, black widow is a neurotoxin, so those are that's why they affect you uh, so much when they bite you. But there has not been anyone that has died from either one of those bites. Now we were in Australia and we were dealing with trap, um, trap. What do they call the, the uh, what's it? Funnel web spiders. Trap spiders. Funnel webs. Those are deadly, but we're not in Australia, so we ain't got to worry about that. Um, <laughs> and like even with the with the uh, tarantulas, they're not even though they're big. And intimidating mm -hmm. looking, their venom is actually not mm -hmm. very toxic. They can bite you, they can inflict okay. a wound, but they're not toxic as, as as you would think they would be. But they're not. No. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Okay, so I'm just because I feel like I get the chance to finally ask all my burning questions. <laughs> what happens to the flies in the winter? What they be doing? What happens to what in the winter? Flies in the winter. Oh, they they either hibernate. If you ever notice, like if it gets if it gets warm, like in the fifty degrees, you'll start seeing flies flying around. What it is, their their bodies they contain a type of antifreeze that their body actually makes, so it keeps them from freezing. Um, as long as we don't have a freeze for an extended period of time, when it warms up, their bodies warm up and they thaw out and they can start flying around again. So they're out there. They're just chilling out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but where do they? What kind of place could you find? I've never come across like a hibernating fly. Where would I find just, a hibernating fly? In leaf litter or if, on bushes. I've seen a lot of them like they just you'll if you open up like some bushes or something they're down in the bushes a lot of times. Uh-huh. Um anywhere like they might stay near like a compost heap or something because it's warm. They might stay there, okay. but for the most part What's up? You'll see them flying around. I got a little. It slowed down on my end. I don't know what's happening on everybody else's end. I'm listening, though. Then on the uh, other end, like mosquitoes and things, some of them overwinter as adults. And they, uh, there's two mosquitoes here that are, of, you know, public health concern, which are the Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus. Aedes albopictus is the actual Asian tiger mosquito. Um, that's the one that. It's a, it, they're both potentially able to carry Zika virus and a whole bunch of other stuff like dengue and chikungunya and these other things that that are actually circulating in the Caribbean. Um, but they are here in the United States, uh, and those are the ones that can actually bite. They bite during the day. That's that's what one key thing about them. The females bite during the day, and they can actually bite through your clothes if you're, if it's very thin. <laughs> Um, I mean, when I used to live in Georgia, oh my gosh, um, that one year, it didn't get cold over the winter, and what happened is that, so their populations didn't die out, and you would go outside, Ooh. and like, you would have jeans on, and they were still biting you through the jeans, and like, it'd just be hundreds of them on your legs, and, um, but they're here, no. <laughs> but what, with those, what, ha what, how they overwinter, if, if they're in an area that gets very, very cold, is that the adults will die out, but the eggs will 
they will lay their eggs by where water will accumulate. So it might be at the edge of like a, a like a little puddle or something or whatever. Mm -hmm. The eggs can they can stay alive for a year. They can dry out. And once the water hits them, they'll rehydrate, and then they'll hatch, and then you'll have larvae, and then you'll have mosquitoes. And depending on the temperature, you can have a mosquito from the egg hatching to an adult in about seven days, depending on if the temperature is right. Wow. Okay. Wow. 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 I'm just so impressed with your knowledge. <laughs> Everything that you just said, I'm like, yes, teach me more. So I will just be... Um, I, I hope that you can get back to me at sometime in the next couple of days because I would love to get you on sometime here in the next couple of weeks, uh, March or whatever. But yeah, let's talk about getting you that segment because we just have a lot of burning questions about bugs, and we oh, do yeah. need to talk. They can count me down, y'all. I've been on here apparently for like an hour, so it's telling me in twenty two seconds I'm gonna go. So, oh, you can only you can only be on here for an hour. <laughs> an hour. Oh, I didn't wow. even realize that I had been on here that long. But I mean, timing is interesting. So y'all listen to Black in the Garden. Obviously, link is in the bio, and I got five seconds. It's just gonna cut itself. <laughs>